Kuzampo and uh, welcome to Samu. Uh, like we have been sharing with you all, this month we celebrate three years of Samu. And there have been so many people along the journey of Samu who has made uh, Samu possible. And some of them are filmmakers. So with us today, we have uh, Sonam Yanzo, one of the very few female filmmakers in Bhutan. And I'm also very happy to share that uh, father, uh, Atta Pelden, has actually groomed an entire generation of Bhutanese filmmakers. So thank you so much, uh, Sunam, for joining us and having this conversation with me. Um, you know, when we started Samu, we had this uh, goal that, you know, we want to make the Bhutanese film industry more inclusive, which meant that we see more females making films in Bhutan. At the same time, more females working behind the scenes, behind the cameras in Bhutan, you know. And we were so excited that we had an opportunity to collaborate with you on uh, helping you also uh, and uh, to create your first feature film debut, yes. you know. So uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, this experience that you had while working on your first feature film debut with Samu. Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my first debut mm -hmm. when we chat, we had the script on our table for like maybe <laughs> more than three years and then mm -hmm. we were not able to go ahead because first of all no finance and uh, when Samu mm -hmm. uh, came on board and then uh, we pitched the story to you and then you said you really liked it and uh, we started uh, writing the script which like almost took maybe more than three, four months to make. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and since it was my first time, we I was not really sure uh, which camera to use, which cameraman to <laughs> take it with us. So it was it was a very tough uh, decision to make. And mm -hmm. then since I have my father, mm -hmm. he helped me uh, decide a few things. But of course, he was not there uh, from I mean in the field mm -hmm. because he said like go ahead you. Uh, do, this is your project and even I wanted to do it because I wanted to get away from the umbrella yeah. of my father so we decided to go ahead and do it it was it was a really difficult journey in mm -hmm. the beginning because mm -hmm. being a first film uh, and uh, with very all, all my team were quite young mm -hmm. I mean first timers so we had a difficult journey but uh, when after after we finish looking at the product, initially we were like <laughs> really happy with how it has come out. But some scenes we did have uh, flaws, like mm. our light was not really <laughs> to the expectation of uh, uh, ourselves, mm. and uh, yeah, it was a difficult first journey <laughs> making. Uh, so like you know, uh, we have like had people you know. Uh, when we released, uh, mm. when we chat on our platform, uh, we've had people, you know, uh, message us and tell us like how much they love the film. And in fact, some people told us, you know, that they watched the film seven to nine times. <laughs> you know, so uh, like for you as a first-time filmmaker, then you know, I understand that you had uh, you. It was like uh, it was challenging for you, yes. but like I want to understand, you know, that. Uh, uh, what was like for you the entire experience of making this feature film? You know, what did it do to you as a filmmaker? You know, did it uh, help you in your journey as a filmmaker? You know, and uh, what was that experience in terms of your personal growth? Before we started filming, when we chat, mm -hmm. I was just filming documentaries mm -hmm. and uh, TV series, and the experience that I had from uh, making documentaries and uh, TV series. Uh, it was much different than like making a feature film, mm. and thankful to Samu for giving me an opportunity to make my first feature film because um, during uh, filming TVs and documentaries mm. we didn't need much of uh, like pre-production planning. It mm. was just like ad hoc, and then I, I was also following like how our Putinese make films. Mm. But uh, after I finished when we chat, I realized my mistake. Mm. I mean, and uh, it made me realize like what I should have done mm. to avoid such, uh, avoid some mm. uh, things that, I, I have done something that can be avoidable, mm. but uh, after finishing, after we finish when we chat, I realized that I learned a lot about pre-production, the importance of like mm. giving a lot of time on pre-production, because mm. uh, we gave a lot of time on the script, and the script 
it's mm -hmm. come out pretty well, mm -hmm. I, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the post production, I was like really excited and like, let's mm -hmm. go, let's go to the field and just film. Mm -hmm. Because that's how we film documentaries mm -hmm. and then TV series. We take it quite lightly. Mm -hmm. But uh, after I finished when we chat, I learned a lot about giving importance mm -hmm. to pre-production and then story about which we never do before. Uh, yeah, before. Mm -hmm. so okay. That was but really how was the like you know for, for us like the film you know like like you said like you were not really really like completely I think hundred percent happy with yeah. the final product of the film but in terms of how the audience you know loved the mm -hmm. film and how the audience responded to the film you know uh, what was your experience on that you know with audience. Um, I, I received messages from uh, some of my friends mm. who were, uh, you know, they filmed their friends crying while watching the mm. film. And I was, I was really happy. I was like, uh, I never thought that, you know, this film will like touch so many people's life because mm. nowadays uh, the situation is such that many of us fall in love online. True. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's the same story in mm. when we chat. So, that uh, when I see such messages coming from mm -hmm. my viewers, I was really happy. I was like, it, that, I think that's one of the main reasons that we make films, mm -hmm. to touch people mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, in some way I think it did. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy. So, you know, for me, the favorite, uh, I think my, what I loved from the film was definitely the songs, the, your choice of songs, you know, and uh, I would say like it was like a, a little bit of more traditional music, traditional kind of songs than more like modern you know, songs, but the choice of songs, the lyrics were so touching and so beautiful, you know. In fact, uh, my niece, you know, when I first uh, made her hear the song, the OST, she cried just <laughs> listening to the song itself, you know. So uh, do you feel like, you know, that uh, as uh, females, you know, that uh, when uh, we work a little more differently than uh, men in our field, you know, what do you feel about that? Mm, about female working in the field. Yeah, like as filmmakers, yeah. you know, like our approach to story, our approach to like uh, song, to choice of songs, you know, is it a little more different than men filmmakers? I, I really cannot say if it's like really mm. uh, different uh, the choice of films because it depends on person to mm. person. But uh, looking at the films that I directed, uh, uh, I think there is a little bit of difference because we look from the point of view from Ani, mm. from women's point of view, and mm. then we give importance to how the men feel as well. But mm. and uh, us looking at that journey, mm. I think it's. I don't know, it's like really different. Uh, mm. I, I see it's different, but I don't know if I can justify why it's different, but mm. I think it's different. <laughs> so, you know, many of you all may not know, but uh, Sona Mianzo is also uh, a really outstanding uh, screenwriter, and uh, she wrote uh, another film for us, uh, a very social issue film, right, uh, yes. called uh, Lhamu. So that particular film also did uh, really well. And in fact, I think it was one of those few films, you know, that uh, about a very important social issue about teenage pregnancy, you know, that we don't really have much films about in Bhutan, yes, right? Yes. So you're also a mother, you know, juggling between a full-time film mm -hmm. career and as well as raising uh, three beautiful boys, you know. Thank so you. do you think like, you know, especially for us in women, you know, what kind of support system it's really required for us, you know, to excel, especially in this creative industry space. Okay, I can tell you from my own mm. uh, personal experience because uh, I live in an extended family where mm. my mother-in-law is there, my mm. uh, husband and his family. We mm. live together, yeah. and uh, being a mother, you always have to have someone who you can really depend on when you're leaving your precious mm. children back home, and then you're going to the field. Mm. So, uh, so uh, there has to be someone who can really help you with the uh, mm. children. And mm. I'm really thankful that my husband is there mm. uh, and my brother, uh, my mother-in-law. Mm. And of course, sometimes I live it with my mom. So like having relatives around is mm. also really helpful. And I think the family should be like a little open-minded. Mm. Because many uh, in, uh, in previous experience, I mm. heard that 
uh, when women come out, especially when mm. you're coming out to make films and all that, you're not looked at it. Uh, mm. I mean, you're looked down. Looked down upon. Yeah, mm. looked down upon. And uh, they think that you'll have an affair with, you people know. People on the set. Yeah, people on the set and all that. Mm. And But that is not actually what is happening. I think it's also because of the influence we have from Bollywood and then mm. everyone thinks like, oh, this person is having an affair with them. Mm. So it's really important to have an uh, open-minded family mm. Mm. who can, you know, accept me working with. Sometimes in the field, I'll be the only mm. female. Mm. Rest, everyone is men. Mm. I mean, so uh, in that sense, we really need an open-minded support system from the mm. family and, of course, uh, an audience. Mm. And for us to grow uh, professionally, yeah. uh, we really need many uh, women filmmakers might come and uh, work in the film industry because mm -hmm. right now the uh, filmmakers, uh, they're mostly, like you said, mm -hmm. they're actress only, mm -hmm. women, and there are not many uh, directors. Uh, directors, sound mm -hmm. and technical, mm -hmm. uh, there are not many women uh, in the technical part of the film industry. And last time, uh, the government, I think they are trying. Uh, last time when we had a COECA training, they had this requirement that about 50% has to be women uh, okay. uh, for the training. But still then, there were not many uh, women who had come forward for the training. So maybe like we ourselves has to grab the opportunity mm. uh, offered. So like, I know, what would you like to uh, perhaps uh, share, you know, with young uh, women, you know, out there who are interested to pursue a career in filmmaking, you know, whether it's in front of the camera or behind the camera, you know, uh, what would be your, you know, advice to them? My advice, it's always like just do it mm -hmm. because don't think about what the society will think about you. Don't think about what uh, anyone will think about you. Just mm -hmm. think about what you want to do mm -hmm. and just go ahead and uh, uh, do what you really love doing it mm. and uh, be it behind the camera or in front of the camera mm. I mean in the end it's you who's mm. there it's mm. not like people who are around you who's like judging you you just don't think about anything and just go to the uh, just do it what you want to do okay all right so thank you Sanam you know <laughs> for sharing uh, this conversation with me yes, and uh, just wanted to share with you you know that uh, in the three years, you know, you people like you, you know, uh, have trusted Samu, you know, to also work with us, you know, and despite having very limited budgets to work <laughs> with, you know, you guys have given your best, you know, to come up with projects, you know, to work on scripts with us as well, you know, and we just hope, you know, that uh, in the next few years uh, we are able to grow uh, and then able to reach more users, you know and uh, able to embrace much more females into the mm -hmm. film industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's also something that we are really aspiring towards. Mm -hmm. So we hope that will happen. So to all of you out there, you know, Bhutan really needs more female filmmakers uh, and also females, you know, who are working in different parts of the filmmaking journey. So and how we can make this happen is as a community, we need to support women filmmakers, you know, make sure you uh, follow women filmmakers in the country, make sure you go out there and support their work, whether they're making documentaries, music videos, songs, or whether they are, you know, uh, making their films. And uh, also encourage, you know, women around you, give them the kind of support that they require to get out there and, you know, make their first films, write their first film stories. Probably, you know, in the next few years, women will have an equal number of uh, uh, jobs in the creative industry, you know, that's more to do with the uh, female, like, you know, in the filmmaking positions, as well as female uh, cinematographers, you know, female sound designers, female video editors, you know, and not just uh, actors in front of the camera. So thank you so much for that.